You mean you missed my deathless point to that? Sorry. <laughs> As you started talking, I realized, oops, we should be recording this. Uh, so welcome to uh, the, another open discussion session on uh, knowledge graphs, part of the fall series of the Ontology Summit 2020. Um, so now I'd uh, last week, I guess we might have missed some people because of, the, because of Joel. Uh, meanwhile, uh, just uh, I guess an hour ago, uh, uh, we got a post in the um, uh, Ontolog Forum from Chaitana Baru, who said that there's an NSF program, uh, Convergence Accelerator. So have, have you seen that? Look at the mailing list. I don't recall seeing that. And if, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see it. What time did it show up in your email? Four hours ago? Four hours ago. Oh, that's recent, huh? Let's see. Pretty recent. 8 a.m. Okay. No, I didn't get my email yet today. I don't see it. Uh, really? I guess you're special, Kenneth. It went to Ontolog Forum. Right. Uh, from 8 a.m. today? Yeah, it's attached to the thread on one of the two copies of today's notice. So you have to look at the thread. Mm, I don't see it here. I'm, I'm looking at my email from 5 o'clock on, and I do not see anything from Ontolog Forum. Really? The last thing I got was from you, Kenneth, at um, what, 10.59 Eastern Time yesterday. I'm attempting to. Well, well, Ravi sent something out today. Oh, yeah, I got Ravi sent yeah, something out just now. Yeah. Hello, good morning. Yes, Ravi here. Hello, Ravi. Yeah, what, what did I say? Well, the last thing I have is, is from Ken, 11, 11 o'clock on. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Day. I see it. He didn't change the heading, the subjects of the. Email. That's that's what I said to you. It's part of the thread as a reply to the notice for this meeting. It's oh, I thought you made, made it part of that thread. I just I just posted it on the uh, on the chat. Thank you. What what did I do? Oh wait, yeah. was it not right? What I oh, did? Oh, Baru. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's fine. I'm opening it now. Okay. Ravi, it wasn't hey, it was, some people couldn't find the email because it was threaded with Ken. What thread? What is, no, I mean, it was clearly there last night. Right, it's not, it's not a problem. Um, it's just that some, some people found the email and some people couldn't find it. Oh, okay. So we will use your email as a way to help them find it, Ravi, because you replied to the one that oh. people didn't find. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, you know, help comes in disguise. <laughs> so, um, it's about the Open Knowledge Network. And, and it looks like they've already put out most of the money for it. Is that what Chaitanya says? Yeah, the NSF program. <coughs> and there's a URL there that you can go look at. I looked at it earlier. It was, this is Terry, by the way. Yeah, I am. Um... Attempting to share, it doesn't seem to want to do that. Why isn't it doing that?
Is this is sharing working now? Yes, you got it. We're seeing something from the NSF. Yes. Yeah. So this is what. Okay, this is track A. Right. So look at these. So these guys have scarfed up all the money? That's what it looked like to me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, no, it's one of the tracks, so they scarfed up half of it. Well, the, but the other tracks got the same list. I mean, not the same list, but has another list. Oh, it's a different, those are very different. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. But notice these are um, open knowledge networks, linking right. the open knowledge network. Um, Simultaneous knowledge network programming and extraction. Um, now, all of these are supposed to be uh, academic, well, uh, joint academic, non academic, and are supposed to be uh, what they call convergence, meaning uh, interdisciplinary. Uh, question is. Would these be interesting speakers for us? Network science of census data. So it looks like quite a lot of people, yeah. quite a lot of projects. Of course, when I actually look at some of these Let's take a look at one just for. Uh, simultaneous knowledge network programming and extraction. So Ken, I want you to grade this paper on uh, buzzword compliance, please. <laughs> yeah, I would like to yeah sort of mutually grade this. <laughs> I like Decide that. if it's I really like offering us something. You get extra points if they introduce new buzzwords. And uh, but anyway, never mind. I apologize. Back. How do you know it's a new buzzword? <laughs> Is it repeated three times in the same t paragraph? Okay, Pat, I'll follow up on that. <laughs> System will be tested on real data and users in the economics domain. So this is, so finally we determined that this is in economics. I, I have a, a must a comment here. So in November of 2008, I passed through Paul Samuelson's office, and he was sharp as a tack, a little hard of hearing. Uh, he knew precisely who I was. It was only the third time I've had met or ever met him. Uh, but I wanted to know if he took any responsibility for the rocket scientists who brought us the real estate collapse. And he offered, well, we did train these fellows. And then we lurched off into other topics. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. They, so. they, they were just biggest they were playing was uh, not keeping track of what happened after they uh, collateralized the uh, that uh, cohorts, you know, like group them into that categories with current uh, credit. 
never bothered what happened to that credit over time and different people had different credits and we had a fiasco anyway i was one rocket scientist who was doing economic analysis at that time <laughs> wow <laughs> okay uh uh but right now this is, this is somewhat tangential the let's see if we could let's see if uh we can invite um the um uh chaitana chaitanya Chaitanya. 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 Yes, very good. Excellent. Um, uh, so he, he can't come, he couldn't come, he or she, I can't tell, um, couldn't come to this meeting. But no, no, it is he. It's it a is he? he. Okay. Yeah. Baru, Baru is his last name. Chaitanya is a male first name. Mm -hmm. And it's just another name for divine as among many Indian names. Okay. Um, so uh, how about if I invite uh, invite him? Yeah. Give us a um, you know, kind of an overview and summary of this program. Um, he couldn't come because it, their kickoff meeting is uh, happening right now. Speaking of, of the um, jargon of the day, um, we're back to people talking about convergence, integration, interoperation, you know, and somehow hoping that the use of these words um, will make something happen. Um, yeah. I think it was very helpful last week that we were examining the history of the semantic web and um, your involvement, Ken and John's, and um, what has happened over time. Um, I think it's helpful for us to see the um, knowledge graphs in that context and um, looking at John's various schematics that he collected of um, what the hopes were for the semantic web. Um, you know, as part of this question of what, it, what's new, what's, um, you know, put it in some kind of historical context. Um, you know, if the, if knowledge graphs are lightweight semantic technology, then what else, what else is needed? Um, I, anyway, yeah, very, um, lots, lots of jargon. We should be a little more careful, speaking of being scientific. Um, I'm trying to look behind behind the jargon. Um, um, my, my opinion on what is needed is a common language, and that's what I'm working on. <laughs> a common logical language <clears throat> based on ontology. Uh, but I think that has been tried um, countless times. And the by question whom? is, why is by it whom? so? Oh, I've been involved in several projects that. No, no, no I'm not, not, ta not talking about terminologies. I'm talking about a real. You know, a, a yeah, I, I've I've seen many controlled terminologies. Um, right. That, well, you have that, terminology. That, that you, make have, it, you have that, conceptual that, models. You have culture. You have, um, you know, so there there are multiple layers, which is actually part of the whole question here is 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 having people see that there are multiple layers. Um, there's human. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What do you mean by multiple layers? Well, there's the <clears throat> physical, logical, um, conceptual. There's um, uh, there are different ways of of parsing or articulating um, the things that need to come together for communication, um, and between people, between machines, between people and machines, um, when they have common background knowledge, when they don't. Um, uh, yeah, that helps. Partial background knowledge. So yes, common language. Well, every, everybody, yeah, everybody has partial back background knowledge. What's that? You know, see, hey, everybody has partial background knowledge. Nobody knows everything that anybody else knows. The question well, common, is, common how do you how do you explain it? How do you explain what you what you mean? And um, you know, I, my, my, I, my start I start my work with the uh, with the notion of the um, defining vocabulary. For example, the Longman Dictionary had these two thousand words as a 
as, as, as their defining vocabulary, which those 2,000 words, they used to define every single word in the dictionary. Now, of course, there's a certain amount of ambiguity, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'm trying to do is to put that into logical form. You get a certain number of logical primitives that can be used to describe everything you want to describe, and everybody can use the same set. Um, and and, and uh, you know we, we know well, from our, our our examples of communication, there is no such thing as communicating without a common language of some kind. And the question is, how do you develop this common language that everybody can use for everything they want to do? And that's what I'm working on. Uh, who is speaking? I on this Pat, this Pat Cassidy. Hi, it's Robbie. Oh, I've been a long time. Thank you. Yeah, been a while. <laughs> See what the meaning if I ever get a chance to get there. Yeah. I missed la last year we were away. I couldn't couldn't get to the meeting. My God. Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome. Okay, so I I guess so. Does everyone agree this would be good? I'll try to get. Uh, Get him to. Yeah, you got him to speak for time. Not next week. So, so how how are we going to connect the knowledge bases or knowledge uh, networks with uh, knowledge graphs? No. Is there a one-to-one -one mapping or uh, correlation possible? No, wouldn't it just be a collection or network of different graphs? Uh, you know, effectively what linked data is trying to do? Well, I was thinking the other way around, uh, Todd. I wasn't thinking that we have a repository which we have to map into knowledge network. I was saying, given the knowledge network, how do we connect or depict them as knowledge graphs? We connect them? Or the ability to connect them? Figuratively speaking, yes. Ability to connect. Oh, magic. No. One of the NSF <laughs> proposals is, sounds like a... Mapping story. procedure or mapping algorithm. We have a we have a lot of so-called knowledge networks or knowledge bases to be even in some people. Oh, there we go. I see. Why, why the side uh, export PDF business? That's just what PDF, Adobe PDF shows when you start it up. Just do the plus plus and it will come. Your way to yeah. Still got PDF. Is that big enough? Anyway, it's big enough. Um, so this was some observations that John's made. But then we had a number of comments. issues that were raised. Question is, have we managed to cover all of these? Cover them in what way? Um, at the moment, it's just to form, just to discuss. Oh. Um, and once we've got a sufficient knowledge base, if you wish, uh -huh. and then we can start planning for the main summit. Could you go back to that list of questions? Sure. Back one, back one slide. Oh, there we go. Oh, is that too far? Yeah, uh, too far. Yeah. What's on number six? Number six, um, slide six. Right. I. I think the last question there, why rebranding was, I don't remember exactly how that was phrased, but is, um, is this a rebranding of the semantic web? And, um, and is that, you know, is that a good thing, a bad thing? Um, it, yeah, it was, a, you know, the, it, it was well phrased. Well, in terms of sales and marketing, it might be a useful thing to do. 
speaking of sales and marketing, when when I, I might have mentioned this, when I when I set up the um, the YouTube channel for the summit, first thing I discovered is that ontology is the name of a cryptocurrency. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> They stole it from us, and that too virtually, right? So I, I've been just looking up ontology on YouTube, and I'm barraged with all of these videos explaining this cryptocurrency. Uh -oh. <laughs> they really stole it. So talk about rebranding. <laughs> huh. I, I, I don't know that there's any connection whatsoever between cryptocurrencies and ontology. They're both obscure to a lot of people. Uh, yeah, it just. Was I it, guess from their point of view, it's just a name. <laughs> did any of those videos videos explain why they chose that name or that term? I didn't the, attempt to look at any. Oh. Um, perhaps they do. Research. But. Um, I mean, it, it, needless to say, it can lead to some confusion. And that's the reason why people attempt to do branding is um, so that terminology is less confusing. Yeah. You, you're aiming for uniqueness. Or as close yeah, as you and can. in this case, oh. it looks like somebody else beat us to it. Well, I think Aristotle, well, not Aristotle, the first men mention of ontology is back in the 16th century, I think. So some oh, I'm, I'm talking about YouTube. Well, just YouTube. Okay. What can well, we do uh, to stop them from using it? Uh, zero. Nothing. We can't stop them. But Kenneth, you said you did. You just search on the term ontology on YouTube. Actually, I was looking for ontology summit. But Barry has a lot of uh, videos or some videos on ontologies there. I forget what label he uses, but I'm pretty sure he has ontology and or yeah, or maybe he's just titled with BFO and not ontology explicitly. Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't look for just ontology. It was actually oh, okay. ontology summit, and apparently this <laughs> cryptocurrency had a summit. <laughs> We need another adjective added after ours. So um, from the point of view of uh, branding, maybe uh, knowledge graphs is less ambiguous at this point. Who knows? Until someone else decides that's a great name for a cryptocurrency or something like that. I think as we saw, the notion of knowledge graphs and ontologies have some overlap, but they're certainly not synonymous or equivalent at this point. But conversely, I tried to use the word ontology in a call this morning in its normal English sense. When you say to somebody from a business point of view, do you have an ontology of that particular set of concepts? Of course, that was a person who being technical immediately thought to meant an alpha. I went, well, that might be not a bad idea. And I'm like, no, what I mean is, have you set out the meanings of these concepts? So it's kind of hard to use the word ontology without it being pigeonholed already by the owl stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's... Um... Ah, Mike, you definitely asked the same question that I asked on the chat. Thank you. I mean, I didn't ask on the chat. I asked, but you wrote, are open knowledge networks the new knowledge graph, which are the new linked data? What a wonderful set of two questions asked in one. I thought I was the last one to catch up with that, but thank you, yes. Right, and I don't think that we can discuss those without some good diagrams, and that was what we were getting from last week's oh, discussion. Yes. Um, yes. Was, yes. 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 Yeah, using... You were just the, wonderful mm -hmm. last week. Sorry. Right. Go ahead. So yeah, so the the various visions of um, semantic interoperability and ontologies and uh, you know from technology to use and back again. Um, John Soa has a nice collection of um, some diagrams. 
um, I think we should aim for that, for working on that for the communique, if we have any hope of doing anything other than um, bouncing from one framing to another. Um, we should, uh, you know, find some kind of common structure um, to see how these things are similar but different. Yeah, I um, I think this is this is a great idea. We should. I think we need yes, a good I idea to start I, actually doing it. Um, I almost uh, took that upon myself internally. I didn't declare it, but I just had a heck of a week. Maybe I at least will make one more attempt this week. So, but um, I guess, I probably that's you're that's going to make the first draft. Is that what you're suggesting? I, I, I will try. I, I do not accept for UML, BPMN, and a couple of other notations. I don't know how to draw too well, but uh, I have only PowerPoint. And if that is acceptable, I will try. Yeah, that would be great. Um, oh, I, we c I can certainly start making drawings. Um, and uh, I think this this would be very useful for uh, for the summit. If I get stuck somewhere, I have Janet and you to reach out to. Right, and we, we should also be we can be collecting um, collecting phrases like these, um, you know, knowledge graphs, open knowledge network, linked data. Um, uh, ontologies co collect together all of the um, of these phrases with the hope that at some point we can figure out how they all fit together in terms of a graph. Yeah. Uh, will the phrases help you draw the picture or what? What are you saying? Or maybe I'm not understanding. I thought I would go to the source material like John's website, like what you last week said, and then think of how to pictorially depict them. Right, I'm and just you, thinking that this is something that maybe we, we can try to have by before January. Maybe we can set a goal of, um, of getting some kind of diagram or diagrams together before January. Okay. Janet, uh, but I, I think it's going to take some iterations, and um, yeah. I'm just saying, going back and forth between lists and um, diagrams, and um, you know, input from different people, and um, I, I think it would be a good product for the fall if, by the time we start the um, summit in January, we can we have this to refer to and to. Um, refer our speakers to. Janet, so maybe they, a, a diagram or diagrams of what? Ah, very good. Knowledge of graph the, concept and what uh, Mike just said. Someone maybe to do an ontology of knowledge graphs. Would you guys let Janet speak? <laughs> yeah, if uh, you could bring up, um, Ken, if you could bring up, I. Uh, John's um, paper on the semantics from multiple points of view. Um, let me see if I can find that quickly. There's the link. Okay, I will. Bringing it up. Yeah, that definitely has a lot of diagrams. Right, right. Are you sharing it, Ken? 
attempting to. Oh, okay. So. Oh, I see. Okay. So first, there's the classical ANSI Spark architecture for relational databases. Uh, definitely still used in database courses. Uh, application system. That's again from relational databases. Then there's, oh, here's another diagram. Wow. This is a new one. Uh, what, again, what is the example of a, what is the intent of having all these diagrams or, or uh, uh, synthesizing these diagrams, Janet? Uh, let Ken go through the paper. Okay. So when uh, the DAML project came along, uh, they, their diagrams were layer cakes. Yeah. Um, so there, here's one of them. Right, I remember. Handlers. Um, then here are three others. Yep. Wow. As the, uh, as the layer cake design evolved. So question is, is a layer cake an appropriate way to express what we're trying to say? Or well, is that too is limiting? Trust. If the goal is trust, then it is. If that's the highest form of knowledge exchange is with trust, then the layer cake is like maturity. Well, these different... Robbie, these different um, diagrams that Ken is showing right now, 2000, 2001, 2005, represent different things. Like 2005 uh, is trying to represent some relationship among the various specifications that are out there. And the one from 2000 is sort of a stupid block diagram of how you might architect an information system using XML and RDF. So there's a whole hodgepodge of notions jammed in here. <laughs> I agree. Uh, it's a, it's a stupid diagram. <laughs> well, they're not entirely yeah, stupid, never. but what they are trying to convey is less than clear, uh, depending on your particular audience. Um, the speakers that use these diagrams may have conveyed much more context and explanation than the diagrams themselves convey. Right. right. I think part, actually it's too uh, bad, John. I, I like because, mm -hmm. Okay, so given all these diagrams that are trying to present different notions in different contexts are, is there a suggestion that we can integrate them or you, we just want to collect them and provide some demonstration of the confusion involved? I, uh, can I answer because I understood Janet when she spoke last week and that was just let us look at this, look at this as a initial collection of how to depict knowledge graphs some related material to that concept. Look elsewhere outside John's articles and uh, publications, and also try to synthesize if we can have an overview that describes knowledge graph, the subject of our summit. Okay, well that would be fine as long as we provide the proper context that would explain the various diagrams. Because which we did a couple of which we did a couple of years ago, if you remember, in our summit, we had the context diagram overview, etc. It has to be something very simple. I mean, not too complex is what I am saying. In no, but, depiction, otherwise, uh, otherwise you don't lead to subtopics under KG. No, but Robbie, uh -huh. do we want the diagram to represent an ontological perspective of a knowledge graph? Do we want to represent the uh, particular technology and implementation of a knowledge graph? Do we want the diagram no, to represent think, the architecture? I think the first one, system? the first one. Yeah. I, I personally think it's the first one that you said. Can you repeat that? Uh, from the notion of an, a knowledge graph from an ontological perspective? Yes. But other people... Otherwise, uh, you know, the people otherwise what is new? We are, we are the ontology people. What is new if we don't 
represent KG in ontology terms or ontology science? I think ideally we would have um, several diagrams that would be views uh, that would be views of a some common architecture um, that would relate the views uh, from different viewpoints. A common architecture? Hmm. Not in not in any um, not to any you know executable right. detail, but as a a common vision of huh. you know if we if we don't do this, then there's too much. Um, uh, reinventing the wheel, um, you know, following uh, marketing trends. There are things that have changed. But um, an architecture, I'm sorry, but an architecture of what? An architecture as a, uh, a high level abstraction that shows the functional um, dependencies in some kind of system. Some kind of system. Oops. I think we've Any system. An yeah. architecture at, at its most general sense, where you have views and viewpoints, where you have, um, you know, in systems engineering architecture, where you have a, um, you know, a vocabulary for appreciating that there are different viewpoints that cannot all be, um, uh, you know, fit into one uh, diagram, but they are related. You can understand how they're related as. Uh, views from different viewpoints. Um, well, that's an uh, that's a, a reasonable goal. Um, hopefully, we will not use SysML. Right, we'll SysML might be, might be a node in the diagram. Hmm. Well, I look forward <laughs> to see what seeing what you can cook up. What <clears throat> we can cook up, Todd. What we can cook up, not you can cook up. Everybody has to participate, if possible. <laughs> Some people will give it the first shot. Yes. Um, yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> well, I put. I well, want to. Sorry. I well, want maybe. you to kindly say, say what you were saying. Please don't stop. You know, Janet, this notion of the SysML and the various perspectives, you see that in all sorts of different architecture frameworks. And to my mind, what it comes down to is having a representation of the various entities involved in their relations. And then people will take some subset of those and say, that's my perspective. So under the hood, what you really just need is an ontology of all this junk stuff. That's the first, yeah, exactly. Because the challenge of trying to do an architecture, if they say, oh, let's do an architecture of knowledge, whatever they are, open knowledge networks or knowledge graphs. Well, first of all, we're going to know what somebody thinks they mean by it. And if seven people think they mean seven things by it, that's seven architectures, not one. Let's do an ontology <laughs> of some meaningful concepts and say for this concept, a might use the word data and B might use the word information, but this is what we mean by this concept. Therefore, this concept, A might use the word meaning and B might use the word semantic, but this is what we mean by this concept, and so on. And then you have something in which people doing OKN grant proposals can actually describe what they mean by reference to something with enough formalism. And it could be done as a written vocabulary to start with, but ideally extended to an ontology with some level of formalism that, you know, at least if the words won't stand still, at least the meaning stands still for long enough that people can refer to something in their architectures. Yeah, well, but, uh, I'm, I'm meaning architecture, not to that extent of development, maybe down, you know, down the road it could be. I'm meaning an architecture as a common understanding that covers um, multiple viewpoints and is stable um, in terms of this um, semantic web question, I, it's interesting. Todd is the one, I think a couple of weeks ago, that you're the, you said nobody wants to hear about the semantic web anymore. Uh, no, I think I think that, but, but Janet, just so you, you, you went from one point to another, could I respond to your first point before yeah. you respond to your second point? 
Um, okay. You described very nicely a definition of architecture earlier, and it is indeed the interfaces between things and the way things connect to each other. And so that need not be a program, but it need be it needs to be something that's formal enough that you can say, here is a thing and here is an interface to another thing. And that's not the same as what we're looking at as an ontology to set out what do we mean by this thing and what's its logical definition in terms of what kind of thing it is and what properties distinguish it from that other thing. So the two are very right. different. Right. If we go back to um, the Zachman Soa metaphor, I'm talking about um, the you know, the original work by the architect um, communicating with the planner and the, um, the owner, sketching what um, the scope is of the project and the, um, you know, you know, the resources and the interests and the users and um, capabilities and that kind of thing. Well, that's so, the third thing again. Sorry. What? I was just led me to interrupt. I was just saying that's the third thing again. Well, see, if we're the the at the early stage when you're meeting with an architect, which I happen to be doing right now, but you there are sketches that are they're not you know it's just because you, you don't jump to the uh, the design elements the implementation before you scope the whole thing. So I guess okay, let's let's say I'm talking about scoping scoping what um, are knowledge graphs in the context of ontologies and the semantic web and AI and these various um, viewpoints uh, that have, people have been working on for um, 50 more years, um, you know, providing some kind of scoping diagram that right. shows that would be helpful. Yeah, I, I, I agree that it needs scoping, but again, I, that's, it's, a, it's stretching the definition of architecture. When you go through with an architect, uh, what you described, you're going through a high level description of what the things are going to be that are to be delivered and how they will connect together. And as time goes on, you go into lower and lower, more detailed definitions of what the things are going to be and how they're going to fit together. That's not the same as the scope, which is itself not the same as what does it mean to be a roof or what does it mean to be a window? Right. Well, but actually, you, when you meet with the architect first, you don't talk about things. You talk about needs and uses and preference and lifestyle and, and things right. like that. Of so a thing that needs to be delivered. Right. The, the pragmatic context. And actually, that's a, that's a good question. What, what does a knowledge graph deliver? What, and what would any of these things deliver? What would AI deliver, or the semantic web, or um, ontologies, or, you know, get away uh, from oh, defining the things and look yeah, at the, or, um, the uh, user. Well, I think that's, that's a really, that's a that's really valuable point. Like I was that, more questioning whether it comes that. under architecture than whether it's a valuable point. I think it's a really, really good place to start and maybe follow through Zachman's approach to this whole stack. But let's just be clear what we do or don't mean by architecture of a product and what we mean by ontology of things yeah so I, I put up an example of such a diagram from an earlier summit 2017. yes that's what I was saying and uh, the tracks were actually organized around these different arrows so there's six different arrows here and each track yes. focused on one or more arrows yes and and this, this summit in 2017 was actually quite successful. In fact, just, just recently, I looked at the number of downloads. And in, the, in just a two-week period of time, over 800, there were over 800 downloads for materials associated with the 2017 summit. In the last two weeks or two weeks since this uh, coming this last, yeah, the, the last two weeks. Wow. So how active is the Pretty active. I, I, it was just remarkable. It's like 10 times as active yes. as any other summit since then. Yes. Um, Part of the reason might be this good diagram. That's what I was saying, that something high overview 
I was thinking we did this for context also, but maybe we didn't. It's yeah, it, it turned out to be a really good organizing principle for the summit. So you saw the different tracks focused on the different arrows. Um, and it gave you a scope for each track. And uh, to some degree, it actually prevented them from overlapping too much. Um, so this, just to give an example of how these kinds of diagrams can be very useful. So um, I think it'll be good to, to try to do which we did XAI. The which? Yes. XAI. The it was one of the tracks for this one, right? <coughs> no. Um, or XAI subsequent one. Recent. 2019, probably. Yeah, yeah, it is 2019. But but what a wonderful thing that it is having such active interest. Uh, but uh, Janet, I need to reply one point you raised. You said why, what, for what we are doing all this. Remember, knowledge graphs are being used by industry to do things like Watson and do things like Google searches and so on. So there is a good deal of utility aspect of knowledge graphs. That's why we started considering them as a topic of the summit. So we can't, we can't go back to the circle one, you know. Right. But, but John would point out that, that anything that could be done in a uh, graph form could be done in a table form. So that's, um, I, I, I'm not saying, so it's a subtle, it's a more subtle question, but I do like the idea of focusing on what they deliver is where you get to the um, coherence, um, where you can say, you know, these are all different. Maybe they're, they're technically different. They're, they come from different, um, you know, different industries. They come from whatever, but they all, they produce value that is of use to people and um so that helps to cohere is it um you know open knowledge networks or um ai or uh, you know whatever it, are they are they using different um no, are they different technically or are they different in what they deliver or are they different in the people who can um get benefit from them or different industries or, um, but I think the use and value perspective is really helpful for cohering. Yes, you are saying user and utility usefulness centric view is required to get people to be appreciating the value of what we are doing. Right. And and it cuts through the differences, in, the superficial differences um, in terminology framing. Yeah. So the, the, I mean, uh, it's always uh, useful to say why we took this topic. It's also useful to illustrate where this topic is adding value user-centric, uh, yes and yes. The, so, the, I don't think many people can differ with that or if there are differences. So what's the plan? <laughs> no, the plan is to relate knowledge graphs to their usefulness and useful um, usefulness and uh, where they are being used in what different perspectives they are being used and and what other similar things have been done in the past with common vocabularies and standards and um uh 
things like that. Um, so that the, how are they similar but different? Just taking a diagrammatic approach is a way to address the what is new, what is persistent, um, so that there's a reference point for, you know, so we don't get bogged down in questions like anything you can do in a graph can be done in a um, table, you know, that. Or linear syntax. Right, exactly. Okay, so we're going to try and create some diagrams that can explain all of these thingies and their relationship. Well, it doesn't have to be all of them, but some kind of higher level perspective. Okay. On, yeah. Place to start. Right. So that's one task now. Can we move on? Or based on that task uh, progress next week, let's say, we will determine what are likely to be subtopics under this overall umbrella. Or is that too soon? Well, you should start discussing them and have some notion to narrow it, be able to narrow it down to a few. Well, uh, I'd like to invite uh, the uh, Chaitanya to give a talk Pardon about me? the NSF. Oh, Chaitanya. Chaitanya. Yeah. Chaitanya. Chaitanya. It's, it's a hard one. To but give that, uh, to give a talk that hopefully we can get that. It won't, there won't be a meeting next week unless you want to, because I'm not going to be available. Um, and then on the, whoever, you, whoever you trust, you can and trust the host code or whatever. I, I mean, I don't know if people want a meeting next week or not. You, you don't need any permission. Anyone can start the meeting. No, you need some kind of host code. No, you don't need a host code. Well, the question is, would enough of these diagrams be ready to have a discussion about them? If that's going to be one of the subjects that we're going um, to Yeah, I would think only if John, if John could lead a discussion with his explanation of, you know, how he pulled these together, what his view is on how they, um, how they're similar but different. Um, you know, he expressed that he thought, I, as I recall, he wasn't speaking directly to the um, paper, but I think he said that um, that he thought the earlier semantic web uh, stack was um, superior to where it went. So it's interesting um, to hear you um, go the other way on it. And I think those are two different viewpoints because you're talking about two different uses. You know, in, in the one case, ambiguity is tolerated because they're trying to show some kind of a rough vision. In the other case, there's um, less ambiguity and more implementability or something like that. Um, so if John were available to talk about the diagrams, then um, a meeting I think would be useful. If not, uh, I, I think it's too early. Well, he did promise to speak when what is his name? Uh, not Majumdar, but somebody else, he said, Arun? was going to speak. Arun Majumdar. That's Arun Majumdar, right? Correct. Yes. Arun Majumdar was going to speak when he would give an overview introduction, and then Arun would show the algorithms and how fast he could do that. Uh, so many, many years work in six man months. Right, so that would be a separate talk. Yeah, yeah. so the, for this one, we, we have to check with John if he's available. Sometimes he is, and sometimes he probably... Yeah, I would, I would recommend we skip next week and see if we can get John for the following week. That'll give time uh, to actually coordinate with John and make sure he... That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I think on the same time slot, we can all show our depiction of knowledge graphs or the overview or a very nice, simple kind of diagram, but 
that was too abstract for me. What can in 2017, what can showed us from the summit was just oversimplified. I well, would like a, one more level of content in that diagram. But that Robbie, that, are, that was for a particular context. That diagram. Yeah, for the, yeah. AI, only for AI. So maybe if we just introduce a dynamic uh, image of Brownian motion of little molecules, that would be adequate. <laughs> that would be adequate for multiple things. And how will you parse them out? Everyone can have their own interpretation. We can use different colors. <laughs> I'm sorry. That so, was Kenneth, a good job. Kenneth, good is that job. schedule okay with you? That's suggested schedule. So, uh, so nothing next week, right? Right. We take a break. Right. Everyone draws their pictures, and they co we try and come back the following week and get John to discuss his, his images and such. And we can introduce any ones that have been created by our gang. Okay. Uh, someone uh, can articulate in one paragraph also what do we mean when we say knowledge graphs. That would be great. Hans Asman tried. Everybody so far says there's no unique definition. Right. So, Ravi, you're proposing that we try and devise one that's going to be sufficiently uh, useful? Yeah, well, at least do one paragraph and one conceptual diagram. I mean, overview diagram is what I want to call That would be a useful thing, I think. Uh, if that by that, if that, else came out of the summit, that would be a very useful uh, artifact. So that is an assignment to all of us. Uh -oh. And uh, and uh, then uh, in two weeks, uh, we will discuss what everybody sent to uh, Ken. Okay. <laughs> You're the collector, Kenneth. I'll collect it together. <laughs> the archivist also. The curator. And Todd, the that link you had? Yeah. I, I was just... It doesn't was, work because part you the colon is in the link. Well, I just clicked on whatever was on the summit page. Yeah, I've got to fix the summit page so it doesn't have that colon. Oh, I see. Okay. I, I, I hate looking at URLs. They're so, yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, how did that colon get in there? Magic happens. Yeah, you just delete the colon and it's just fine. Oh, okay. Um, I can't delete the colon. When you click, it will show up. Where in? Oh, yeah. And what page is it on? But the link? Now, where did you find the link? On um, the Ontology Summit 2017 page, there's a link to the communique. That's okay, what I Okay, let me go to that. Um, but on the summit page itself, this diagram was there. Uh, I just I just just googled on ontology summit 2017 and the the URL for the summit page came up at the top and um, oh, down process and deliverables there's a section and it says there's the link to the communique communique and it's pointing to S3 at Amazon, AWS, Ontolog Forum, Ontology Summit 217, communicate. I don't see any colon in there at all. At least the link doesn't show it. Yeah, I'm having difficulty finding oh. where that colon occurred. Now it opened up. Okay, I don't know what happened, Kenneth. The link is cooperating now. This uh, XML file doesn't appear to have any style information associated with it. The document tree is shown. <laughs> it went into XML. Okay, so we got a we got a plan for the next two weeks anyway. Yes. The the second week will be analysis and review of everybody's homework submission. So that's 16 October? 16th October, right. Okie doke. You remember that the 30th of October, Jans Osman is coming back. 
Good. Break out the beer. Okay, and um, ooh. And, uh, at that point, but I'm I'm sorry. I'll be traveling halfway around. So the 16th, and then maybe on the 23rd also, we'll work on this. Okay. We'll have to see how far we get on the 16th, especially if John joins in. Right. And then, um, is. That'll, so that'll take us to the end of October. Okay. Uh, so Janet, are you going to contact John? Uh, I, I could do that, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the. I missed what people were just saying about the schedule. What was that again? So no, we're we're going to work on these. Assignment, assignment is on the chat. Okay, yeah. and let me see. There's no timeline um, on the chat. So, um, so John was well. So the question is, when can John join us in the next? few weeks right well i thought in two weeks that was the intent that's the hope yeah so so we take one week off then john um and then what after that um uh, jan says the 30th is that right the 30th right and so what's the 23rd 23rd is still open oh okay so john could do either the 16th or the 23rd maybe uh, just to give him a little flexibility. All right. Okay. I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, just send things to me. Let me know. I'll, uh, I'll take care of the organization. Okay. Okay, so that's it for this.